A freak accident at home brought us to our hospital. Now, I haven't visited that hospital or any hospital for all that matters for all the years since doctors killed my mother. It wasn't a specific doctor, mind you, but it was the way medicine functions currently that killed her, as it did my father in a very similar fashion. I have no doubt that there are souls eager and willing to truly help others to maintain their health, but the blue pill for doctors is simply too tempting, as medicine is currently based on the practical opposite premise of itself. For a doctor to truly, entirely and effectively heal, he must lose a customer. He has to let go of an income source. Livelihood is often a shrewd and sticky attachment that becomes a shackle of the most effective kind, because legality within culture is treated, then, conveniently and confused with morality. Just doing my job has to rank among the most used retorts when a mental complex, that is, the complex made up of the ego and its current attachments, is faced with an obvious moral dilemma whose pure and true choice implies leaving behind a secure, if morally putrid, way of life. Anyway, if it wasn't for that freak accident last night, I certainly wouldn't have come here to sit in the waiting room where those unfortunate enough to need are processed by the broken remains of what may have once been a source of love, but now merely go through in different motions as cattle handlers. And they do so for emotional self-defense, I know. The linoleum dirty faded light green, certainly a choice, albeit ineffective and outright uninviting, to go with the bleached kind of chemical algae hue that covers the walls of the entire section. This combination gives the place an oppressive, stuffy feel, as if the ceiling was too close to our heads and a, a course of sewage waters ran through the halls, putrid and yet unnoticed. From among these thoughts, a sudden feeling of affliction touched me. A black woman whose bulging eyes and ceaseless fidgeting did nothing to conceal an intense, deep dread that seemed to be on the verge of overflowing and gushing out of her. She paced around the place irregularly, addressing anyone who crossed her path in an obscure mix of half heavily accented Portuguese with what might have probably been words in an African tongue. Something about liking theater. That was just about the extent of what I was able to make out of her speech. She treated everyone politely, yet her demeanor was completely disconcerting. There was heavy torment beneath her dark cactus-like hair, maybe an overwhelming fear of loss, maybe drug withdrawal, but to me it didn't matter what. She seemed omnipresent in her ceaseless pacing, her fingers twisting the edges of the cloth in her long, loose t-shirt. She walked up to a nurse. There are no doctors here, the nurse replied dismissively. It had become evident to me that she had been looking for a doctor and was sure to have approached, approached every nurse and doctor in the block during her hazy, crazed, yet apparently gentle gallop back and forth. I felt her anguish unknown in origin, in origin as it was to me, as, as if I was there racing back and forth alongside her. A deranged, broken, fearful, wandering soul such as I could have been, were I, were I less fortunate or less alert, or both, during the course of my life and as I made my decisions. When we left emergency, we curiously found her again, you see, omnipresent, having a smoke outside, still pacing but now across the yard and parking lot. She wore black as black as her black skin, and as she moved from beneath the street lamp into the dark of night, she melded into it, as symbolically as that imagery is. Only the orangey dot of her cigarette would signal her presence in the in-between darks she had to cross. 
It reminded me of the epithet in Keith Jarrett's Dark Intervals concert, which goes, Touch is only possible at the edge of spaces. Light is only precious during dark intervals. Going back in time and inside, from among the sad catatonic sort of noisy silence, made up of, among others, a worn-out broken man receiving saline with his daughter in attendance, an old chubby lady doing her utmost effort not to vomit, a yet animated corpse with almost transparent skin hoping it would end soon. Among the ambience of torment, a painful writhing cry arose above all others. It was another old lady whose wheeled stretcher had been placed against one of the walls, just next to a few others who just lay there silently. At first, I thought she was in pain, but there was a sort of cursed prayer going on as she gasped for breath in between her cries. That indicated something beyond pain. It didn't take long for me to find out why she cried, and as I discovered, I nearly jolted. What is this woman doing here? One voice said. That's... Wait, that's the lady that was reanimated. What is she doing here in the hall? Yes, she had been brought back. She was brought back to a broken, pained body and abandoned as punishment for daring to go before her time. Punished by young people that will probably one day be old, certainly one day be dying, maybe one day be wishing to be left to pass on peacefully. Punished by young people that were just following procedures, rules, regulations and statutes that go against their own truthful morality. But they still do it. Don't take me wrong. Maybe the old lady acted the same when she was young. Innocence is not the question here. Courage to break the chain of punishment built on punishment is... Would you rather be fired from an immoral job for acting with morality as an individual, or to continue burying it under this collective madness? Anyway, they took that lady away somewhere inside, and a part of me went with her, just as a piece of me followed the black lady that would pace in the dark outside. Today, as I sit here remembering and recording this, I am not exactly the same mental complex. My ego is not the same. And I know that the freak accident had purpose. I returned from the waiting room of the underworld, having peeked into the catatonia of procedural indifference. Comforted by the knowledge that time will carry away, in its irresistible waves, any remnant of the sad puny state we find ourselves into. I saw the world in those halls of sewer green. I saw the waiting room they put us in. May we all find our way back home. May we transmute the lead and mercury that surrounds us into the gold of the truth we are. May we slide the curtain aside. May we see what can't be seen with eyes and hear what can't be heard with ears. May we love what is easiest to hate. May we pierce the heart of the dragon and the eyes of the serpent with our luminous lance that is a silent tongue. May we save the damsel that created the world despite of her creation with a loving heart that is an unbreakable shield. May we simply be with a tranquil mind that is the crown of the highest kingdom. May we seek until we are found. <laughs>